Hi, today we're talking with Jason Powers of ZFA Structural Engineers, and I'm Dave Edwards with Earthbound Homes, and we're talking about when you should hire a structural engineer and when you can do it on your own. So let's get into it. So how's it going, Jason? Going well. Good. So uh, earlier we've talked about uh, kind of your job as a structural engineer, and I'd really like to focus today on what, when we should be calling a structural engineer and when we really don't need a structural engineer. I know that there's things called prescriptive codes that allow us to, to build structures without a structural engineer, and I know that, that uh, architects can do their own structural engineering, although they typically don't. So in your, in your version or, or your idea, when do you think it makes sense to uh, hire a structural engineer and you know, what's that, that general scope of project that you would say definitely you need to hire a structural engineer or you, know, you could potentially do it on your own? Yeah, I would say like a shed in the backyard, probably don't need a structural engineer. Um, and Why uh, is that? Why is a shed, a shed's kind of like a small house, why is a shed not important for having structural engineering? I guess I'm thinking of it as a storage, you know, something with storage in it, low risk situations, small, um, short, wood framed. So, so nobody's living in it, it's exactly. basically just storage area. So the life and safety part of it is not really yeah. an important element. Yes, Okay. exactly. In uh, in California with the, with the earthquake um, risk that, that we all are aware of living in California, I think any, any um, any structure that is going to house people, that starts to, that that's a good time to talk to a structural engineer. Okay. And particularly for permitting and in anything, it, there's the seismic design in California per code is required where you you really you really you need a, a structural engineer to um, get a permit to build. To okay. But what if you're not building? What if you're just say installing a window or a door or um, putting in a skylight or something like that? Yeah, I think simple things like that. Uh, a good builder can is totally fine. You don't need a structural engineer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but what happens if, for instance, that window? So maybe it's a it's a fifteen year old house, right? A fifteen year old house probably uh, has some some uh, shear walls and maybe it has trusses. Uh, whereas a fifty year old house probably doesn't have any of that. Maybe it has trusses, but it probably doesn't have shear walls, right? Yeah. So. What happens if I cut a hole into a into a shear wall? Then I would call a structural engineer. Yeah. So how Ideally, is it, we'd know that beforehand, though. Yeah. But how is a how is a homeowner to know what is a shear wall and what's not a shear wall? Yeah, that's often pretty difficult for homeowners to know. So it's a good time to talk with speak with a builder and or call in a structural engineer to verify that. Okay. Yeah. So in general, uh, it makes sense to not. Well, I think walls and and f and roofs are different things, right? Like. Um, I know a lot of our projects in the Bay Area have str trusses for roofs, and we'll overlay a truss uh, in the image right here. But uh, when we talk about trusses, uh, we really can't cut anything on a truss, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, putting in a two by four skylight in a roof between trusses would be okay. But if you want to put in a bigger skylight and you want the truss to be out of the way, that really requires. A structural engineer to come in. Yeah, exactly. You right? want to do that. Yep. You so, would you say that in general it makes sense for any time a homeowner is looking at changing the structure of a building, removing a wall, adding a window or a door, doing anything structural with the with the roof that, you know, it it makes sense to to pay a structural engineer just to come in and kind of bless what you're doing. I do. I think I could at least help confirm whether it is a bearing wall, a structural wall, or, an, or a non-structural wall. And then um, you can move forward confidently with your project. Okay. So what about, um, you know, I've gotten into a lot of projects before, and the homeowners have asked me to uh, what we could do here and what we could do there. And, and my standard response is, well, yeah, we could do all that stuff, but we still require a structural engineer to bless us because... Even though we've been doing this for 20 plus years, uh, you know, we don't understand all of the stresses that go on to these projects. And really the, the small amount of, of money that we spend getting a structural engineer to do a project makes a lot of sense for us. Uh, 
it's you know it's a liability issue it's a life safety issue um it's just making sure that even the permits right like sometimes we have to get permits but uh or all the times we have to get permits but we should always have structural engineering bless that that work just so somebody that is trained specifically in this field does that analysis and make sure that we're adding uh, value to that project adding structure to that house as opposed to taking structure away yeah i could agree wholeheartedly um we've talked about gravity and lateral loads before these are real loads particularly in california gravity is is anywhere and everywhere of course um if you take out take out a post underneath a beam that you don't know about it that could cause that could that could have, potentially hurt somebody. So it's just good to confirm that right. you're not removing something that's a part of the primary structure. And seismic, same, same, same situation. Um, it's good to know whether you're affecting those existing systems and how to put that strength back as needed given, given your project right. and scope. So what have been the changes that you've seen over the last 10 or 20 years with respect to, to structural building code? I know that California is uh, is kind of on the leading edge of, of requirements for structural engineering and building. Um, although I read an article earlier today that said that, uh, that actually Florida has the most stringent building codes because of the hurricanes there. But we have earthquakes, and while they're not nearly as often as hurricanes, uh, they are a significant load. And I know that what I, when I started 20 years ago, what I had to do to a project and what I have to do to a project now to build it is completely different. Like... What do you see as the as the evolution of that building code, and where do you see it going in the future? Yeah, the building codes are are not perfect, um, but they are they are continually evolving and can continue to take feedback from history and past events, particularly like if there's an earthquake in the area or anywhere. There's a whole group of of engineers that study um, that earthquake and the and the damage that was done bring that knowledge and experience back from real life or, or, um, earthquakes and and that that is gets inputted into uh, new code development so the code while it feels like it does get more stringent almost every every code cycle it is really assimilating the the uh, growing always growing knowledge and evolving knowledge of the industry so generally they're getting more and more accurate and and tuned to our uh, current current world. I think that's really important. And I think, um, you know, you often hear about building inspectors and, and the code being a negative. Um, we actually believe it's a huge positive, And it sounds like you also believe it's a huge positive, right? Like it is about informed uh, experiences in the past and other projects and keeping it from impacting your house or, or a client's house. I mean, it's about making our projects better. And yes, it makes them more expensive, but it makes them longer lasting and more durable and better in earthquakes so that we're protecting life and safety because yeah. that's really our job, right? Ultimately, it's about safety for the inhabitants of these buildings and homes. So you see some of these, you see on the news, the earthquakes from around the world from countries that don't have astringent building codes. And um, yeah, it's really, <laughs> it's really grim. Yeah. See. The, the stories from China, uh, specifically in the, in the contractors there that, you know, I remember a story a long time ago about a major multifamily building that collapsed because the concrete was expensive and the structure or the builder threw in uh, old empty paint cans into the concrete forms to displace the concrete. So he had to use less concrete. So when the building collapsed, uh, they found all these cans in the, in the structural reinforcement, which is... I mean, it's it's funny because like it's just it's crazy, but it's also terrifyingly sad. Totally, and uh, you know, while it feels very tedious sometimes, all the inspections and requirements we have to go through as we're building these structures, yeah. you know, those are really in place to to make sure that there's no paint cans in that in that foundation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we um, I have. It's not been hard to convince all of my people that uh, mm. that. The inspectors are there and the code is there to protect us and protect them uh, and to protect them from unscrupulous builders because there's a lot of guys out there that are just trying to, to build and not really paying attention to stuff. And uh, the building inspectors and the code is there to protect you, the homeowner. Uh, from life and safety issues. I totally agree. Yeah. That's awesome. People go down the other road, it can be even more costly if it turns out to be um, not built well. Yeah, I think that's really important. 
So thank you, Jason. So if you're interested in learning more about structural engineering or about building science in general, or if you're just interested in following our projects or being part of these conversations, please hit subscribe as we teach you how to build a better way.